road I'm on is straight and narrow, but it leads to a better home. It was laid by Christ one day. Oh, see, I just wanted to give you, uh, or should I say share with you some thoughts, but I also wanted just to let you know uh, kind of how things has been to, going here. It's been rough since Mother's passing. And of course, miss her very, very much. And uh, I want to say to all of you, thank you for the prayers. If it wasn't for your prayers, you know, uh, it'd be hard even now to even be talking, you know, but, or even standing for that fact. And you're gonna hear Cricket over here doing his little thing here now and then and some of these other hens, so please forgive the uh, background noise. But uh, anyway, I wanted to say thank you for the prayers. And by God's grace and His strength, I'm standing. And I am a very strong, firm believer in prayer. I, I don't think that there's one person on this earth who doesn't need prayer. And that includes your enemies. Yeah, that's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Yep. You, you know, you got to, you got to pray for them. Because you got to look at it like this. Like the old saying, if not for the grace of God, there go I. Yeah. Think about it. But, you know, I wanted to share uh, something here, uh, a thought. Now, there... I've been seeing a, a lot of stuff, you know, and you have too, on this Hamas-Israel uh, thing. And there's so many of these young people and others, you know, just standing up for Hamas. They say Palestinians, but they're actually, you're not standing up for the Palestinians or for Hamas. And uh, that... Israel's the occupier, blah, 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 and all this. And I've heard some Christians, or supposed to be Christians anyway, uh, in some of their comments on other people's videos and stuff, saying, even on Facebook even, where that... <laughs> yeah, where... Uh, they want to say that the Christians, the, the church has replaced Israel, the, the Jews, and he's done away from them. All of it goes to, goes to uh, the Christians. But what they're failing to forget is that they're calling the beautiful great one, God, a liar. And if by chance anyone who's watching is, if your stance is for, or should I say, against the Jews, uh, I want to tell you something. All right, right now, all right, naturally, firmly, I, I stand with Israel. According to scriptures in, in the Bible, even though Israel you know, had many times in the past, you know, and you look in biblical history, for example, all right, you see where the Jews had turned their backs on God, Yahweh, Jehovah, all right, uh, but they, they, they turned their backs on them, but end up, though, eventually they, they turned back to them, and, but see, the thing is, you'll see where he never gave up or forsaken Israel total. 
because, see, it is only because of his promise. His name is in Israel. All right? He, he makes promises, and he don't back down from them. And he will not totally forsake Israel. And many times, even in modern times, if it wasn't for the beautiful great one, there wouldn't be no hope for him. But look at him. Them standing there today is a miracle. I could go through all of that and take forever. But here's my, my point on my stance. All right, I'm going to read this to you so you can understand that it's not just me talking, you know, and just carrying on sharing just only my opinion I want to back up uh, stand for hold up should I say the book of heaven the bible you may hear some again hear some <laughs> chickens clucking and carrying on I think one, I'm not no that's that's cricket that's a rooster. Uh, anyway. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's look at Romans chapter 9. I might be skipping around on, on this chapter, uh, you know, for the sake of time. All right, it says in verse 1, I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption as sons there's the divine glory the covenant the receiving of the law the temple worship and the promises theirs are the patriarchs and from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ who is God over all forever praised amen uh, yes I'm reading from the NIV you know, a lot of people prefer the King James, but uh, but a lot of people don't like the Old English because they don't understand it. I love the King James version, but I have I understand it, but there, it was a struggle to understand it because a lot of the old English terms we don't use today. Uh, we didn't even use those terms when I was a kid in school or nothing, you know. So, yeah. See, I'm not that old. I'm old, but I'm not that old. I, 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 don't, I don't speak a lot of that old English stuff, you know. But I love the poeticness. Poeticness? Poetry, I guess you say, so to speak, uh on the uh, King James but I like to read something that where anyone understands what I'm reading so just I just want to make that clear okay <laughs> okay uh, on verse 6 says it is not as though God's word had failed you hear that it is not as though God's word had failed, because it does not fail. For not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Now, see, a lot of people want to kind of stop there and cherry-pick this chapter, but they need to read it in its full context. He's, in verse 7, it says, Nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. Are you... Abraham's. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Okay? 
In other words, it is not the natural children who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the promise was stated, at the appointed time I will return and Sarah will have a son. Now, I'm going to kind of skip on down here a little bit. Now, I encourage you to read the whole chapter. Uh, let's see. Okay, I want to skip down. Uh, verse 16. It does not therefore depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I raise you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. One of you, wherever that is, uh, one of you, all right, verse 19, one of you will say to me, then why does God still blame me? Hold on, I want to skip on down. Um, okay, now we're going to uh, 10. See, now you got to have chapter 9 and 10. But I'm going to encourage, I'm trying to save time here, okay? Uh, but I want, I want to encourage you to read chapter 9 and 10, all of it, to get the full context, okay? Uh, chapter 10, verse 1, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Uh, let's go on. Uh, Let's see, let me find it. Okay, now, we're going to chapter 11. I, again, read, read chapter uh, 9 and 10. And now here we go, on chapter 11. You got to really, really read it. Because time will not permit for me to, to go on much longer here. But let me read this. I ask then, did God reject his people? Now listen. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. By no means. Let me read that again. I ask then did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself. Okay, he says, a descendant of Abraham. This is Paul, the Apostle Paul writing, all right? A descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin, or Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. You listening? He didn't replace the Jews with the church. By no means. With the Gentiles. Uh-uh. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know that the scripture says in the passage about Elijah how he appealed to to God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left and they are and they are trying to kill me. He was having a, a, a downtime. He was having a pity party. He, he says, and on verse 4 of chapter 11, and what was God's answer to him? 
I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So, too, at the present time there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it is no longer by works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. What then? What Israel sought so earnestly it did not obtain, but the elect did. The others were hardened, as it is written. God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes so that they could not see, and ears so that they could not hear to this very day. Now let's go down to uh, verse 11. Again I ask, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Okay, uh, rather because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious or to make them jealous, so to speak. But the word would be more appropriately used as envious. But if their transgression means riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their fullness bring? I am talking to you Gentiles. Listen to what he's saying here. Uh, he says, Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I make much of my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If, they, uh, if the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, talking about Gentiles, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not boast over those branches. Whoa! Yeah. He says, if you do consider this, he says, if you do consider this, you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. In other words, well, Israel was cut off so, so, that, so that we could be saved and be the church in God's new Israel. <coughs> Wrong answer. All right. He says, but Paul says, granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief and you stand by faith do not be arrogant and be afraid for if God did not spare the natural branches he will not spare you either you go putting yourself above God's will and above what he has said and declared you're in a bad position you and me, if we make that bad decision, ooh, not good. Consider, therefore, the kindness and sternness of God. Consider it. Sternness to those who fail, but kindness to you. Provided that you continue in His kindness. Otherwise, you will be cut off. You don't think God can't cut you off? You don't think he can cut off the Gentiles? Hmm. Otherwise, you will be cut off. And in verse 23, And if they do not perish in unbelief, they will be grafted in. Talking about the Jews, Israel. For God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature and contrary to nature were grafted into the cultivated olive tree how much more readily will these natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree he says I don't want you to be ignorant of this mystery brother so that you may not be conceited 
Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godless, godlessness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies on your account. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. So, and even at that time, there was some Jews that were accepting Jesus, Yeshua, as the Messiah. And today you got some Jews that have turned and accepting Yeshua, Jesus, as the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One, which is a good thing, right? So, but here's the point. I mean, you, you read all that for yourself. Read 9, 10, and 11 carefully. And you will sit there and see a, a lot here, all right, with the Jews. This is why I make my stand with the Jews, with Israel. You know, because, see, there's a lot people don't understand. They, they, a lot of Christians, they, they get confused and they forget what Scripture says. Read things for yourself and don't listen to every Tom, Dick, and Harry who comes along and, 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 and trying to make you believe that the church replaced the Jews, Israel, and that they're cut off. That's it. There's no more. We should hate the Jews. No. no. And if you're going to stand against the Jews, against Israel, I kind of worry about you. We should love all people, for one. Okay? Because if it wasn't for the Jewish people, if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be here, uh, you know, hearing about Christ. I'm sorry, you wouldn't. If there was no Jacob, if there was, you know, no Israel, if there was uh, no none of the patriarchs, you know, none of the 12 tribes of Israel, and you wouldn't be, we wouldn't be talking about Christ or, or the church. It wouldn't be one. And that's the facts, Jack. But I just wanted to share that little bit. I make my stand for Israel. That is why I make my stance for them. Now, whether some of the Jews are, are, are wrong or uh, of all of them, I still make my stand. Not for wrong but because of the promises of God. And because we're supposed to love everyone, regardless. Do I care for the, the evil that the Hamas is doing? No. They're evil, vile. Uh, and, you know, but, don't get me wrong. Listen to what I'm saying. We love our enemies. Not what they're doing. You hate the evil that sinful, evil, wicked men do. You hate that, not the person. Yeah, that can be a little hard at times. Trust me, I know. But the thing is, what you ought to do is be praying for their salvation, that they can come to the truth that they can see the light. That's what we're to pray for with our enemies. 
you know, if you pray, really pray that, you know, you're going to find that you have a love for them, not the wrongs that they do, but l love for them the way God loves us, loves all people. He don't love the wickedness, the evil that people do. He don't. So I just wanted to share that with you, why I make my stance for Israel. That is the reason why I do. Because of Him. And because the promises that's written in His Holy Word, the Book of Heaven. The beautiful Great One sees all. He knows all. And I want to say to uh, Susan, thank you for your prayers, sis. And also, I want to say thank you to Standing Bear. Uh, man, I love him. He's like my brother. He like as if, he, as if he was my own flesh and blood. You know, he he's he he's a good friend, a good brother. And uh, also, want to say, hey, yo, uh, <laughs> Danny. Love you, bro. And uh, there's so many. Michelle, I hope. And even uh, Seth, hey, old Johnny Music, yeah, Bob. Okay. And uh, so I want, and there's so many more of you. Jeremy D. Day. Uh, man, there, there's so many. Man, my mind gets overwhelmed. I got so much stuff going on since mother passed. We've been having problems with probates and uh, other stuff, the wheel and stuff. You know, no, there's not no infighting over that because, you know, it wasn't a lot there. But, you know, still, uh, have, you know, between that, between that and how the uh, government, well, you know how what I'm talking about, the government and all this kind of stuff, how that, so he's got to get all straightened out still. But anyway, uh, I want to thank you for your prayers. Still pray for us. Uh, and especially remember my brother, my brother Dave, okay? Remember him, all right? He, he needs prayers. He He's having a, a, a tough time, and he needs help. He's having, because, uh, you know, he's got... Uh, a big responsibility is more on him than than us, and and and, and it's heavy on us. But uh, uh, because uh, he he was a appointed executor of the estate, and he don't really know a lot about all that. And I'm glad I wasn't, you know, uh, because I sure wouldn't know how all handle all of that. That's that's why I pray, you know, that uh, the Lord will help him. And uh, he can uh, have some wisdom with it. Someone can help direct him in the right direction on this stuff. And pray for his soul, too. <laughs> Let's pray for all people's souls. Okay? I, I talked enough. I could say more. But I do want to say I thank you. And I love you all. And I just, you know... I just hadn't been up lately to doing a live, but hopefully maybe uh, within the next couple of within the next couple of weeks somewhere, hopefully I can get the time and and uh, feel up to it and all that and do a live. Okay, so y'all be blessed in everything. Now y'all are in my prayers, and I'm not whistling Dixie there. I am telling you the truth. And I do love you all. And, um, hey, you take care. And uh, I will catch you another time. I'll catch you later. Be blessed. And stay safe. Because these are crazy times we're living in. And watch your six. Uh, love one another and pray for one another, okay? Stop your bickering. <laughs> It don't get us nowhere. All right. I love y'all. Take care. Be blessed. And I hope. Why do y'all?